I did everything I was told to growing up. I went to school, I got straight A's, I went to university. But once I graduated from college, I was like, wait, what do I do now? I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I said, why don't I just get married? And then I got divorced and I felt like a failure and I wasn't being true to who I was. Great job, Aline. You had potential, but you messed it all up before you were 25. Hello, everybody. You've been sitting a really long time, so like, feel free to stretch, like move around, like move your body a little bit. Okay, hello, everybody. My name is Aline. I make videos on Facebook and other platforms under the pseudonym Dear Lean, and today I'm going to talk to you about money, okay? I feel like a lot of creators here, some of you have already figured it out, you're already making an income, but I feel like a lot of people here have not figured it out just yet, and I know that feeling and I know it's a struggle, okay? Oh no, I don't have a clicker. No one gave me a clicker. I don't have the power. Okay. Let's go. So we're going to talk about first my story and a little bit of my background. How did this happen? Where did Aline come from? Who is she? All right. So I grew up in a small town called Los Angeles. All right. <laughs> my mom was Mormon, is Mormon, very, very religious. Okay. American, blonde hair, blue eyes, cheerleader. I did not get her genetics. Okay. And my dad is Israeli. This is us in Israel at like my fourth birthday riding donkeys because I always loved animals, all right? I did everything I was told to growing up. I went to school. I got straight A's. I went to university. I was religious like my mom wanted me to be. I did everything right. But once I graduated from college, I was like, wait, what do I do now? There's no more game plan. Like I panicked. Oh, my God, what do I do now? So I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I said, why don't I just get married? <laughs> that seems like the best solution. That solves all my problems, right? Well, that was not right. It was my mom's dream for me. She wanted me to get married in the Mormon church. That was like, literally, she was done with life. She's like, my daughter has completed her mission in life. She's going to heaven. She was married in the temple to a nice Mormon boy. And then I got divorced. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, and you know what's funny? This talk is not about this, but the, the divorce was not even my choice, and I felt like a failure, all right? Everything in life was taken away. The home that we had built was gone. He was kept the home. I had a pet fox. I couldn't keep the fox anymore because the home was zoned for foxes. Um, the company we had built together, gone. I went to live with a friend's family. I felt like, wow, <laughs> great job, Aline. You had potential, but you messed it all up before you were 25, okay? But the truth is, being a failure and hitting my version of rock bottom was the best thing that happened to me, right? Literally, I used to hear talks growing up, and they're like, hitting rock bottom was great. And I was like, I don't want to hit rock bottom. <laughs> I'll just have a worse life without hitting rock bottom, okay? Um, but I'm so glad I did, okay? Because what I realized is, I had been living life the way everyone else wanted me to live life. Because when we're kids, we're like, we want to be good, we want to make our parents and our friends and everyone happy. But I wasn't making myself happy, and I wasn't being true to who I was. So doing everything their way from A to Z gave me permission now to try life in my own way, all right? And that's when things started getting better, all right? I became a digital nomad. I found a job online. It didn't pay very much, but I didn't care because I got to make money while I was traveling. And then I left the US. I said, I have a goal. I love traveling since I'm a kid. I studied ancient history, which definitely aligns with my job as a creator now, archaeology. Um, and I started traveling. I said, I'm going to travel for one year. I'm not re-entering the US for one year. I refuse. I want to live abroad, so I went to Albania. I went to Italy. I got a random job working on Porsche tours, which was my first taste of the luxury life, you know, like here in Dubai. And then one day I was scrolling online. I had met Nasir about this time. We were traveling together. We were doing the thousand days of videos. I was always trying to control his content, like make a video about vegetarianism, make videos about women. He was like, make your own videos, okay? <laughs> Stop controlling my page. <laughs> So I was scrolling online and I was like, 
I don't love the content I'm seeing here. And this was at Facebook at the time, when I used Facebook a lot back then. And I was like, why don't people make videos about more important stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I realized I was pointing my finger at other people, when the only person we should be pointing at is ourselves, right? So I said, you know what, Aline? Wow, stop telling other people what to do and tell yourself what to do. If you want it to happen, you make it happen. You're an adult, you have a cell phone, you have a laptop, do it your dang self, okay? So I decided to make videos about topics that I cared about. And my topics will be different from yours, but I cared about you know, things that bothered me growing up. Why do women have to be virgins? Why is this like the most important thing on planet Earth? Um, if I don't want kids, why is it such a big deal? Right? Why are women paying more for certain products just because they're pink? Okay? And luckily, this worked. All right? And I think it's worth noting here, um, I wasn't doing this to make this a job. Actually, I had like a burning anger inside of me, an irritation, right? Where I was like, why is no one making these videos? But the thing is, when you do something well, it can become a job, anything, right? If you like hanging out with friends, you can run retreats. If you like writing and making datas, you know, some of you are data people, you can be a data person, whatever you guys do. I don't know what you do. <laughs> but thank you for doing it, because I need help, okay? So Dear Aline grew to one million followers in one year, and that was amazing, and that was a goal I had, actually, ahead of time, and it worked. And opportunities started coming, oh, my life was good, this is like the movie where there's like a montage, and I'm shopping, I'm having fun with my friends, and then I realized, wait, in the montage, there are no friends. <laughs> I had no friends, I was by myself every day, you guys know, your creators. It looks like you're having fun, but like you're having fun for like 30 minutes and then you're editing for like 25 hours. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if like I want to do this forever. I don't know if I enjoy this. Um, so I said, you know what, I need to change something up. I'm going to move offline. I miss seeing people in real life. I miss these deep connections. I had millions of followers at this point, but I didn't have really very many close friends. Okay? So I decided to host retreats. I was like, you know what? The, I have followers, and in these followers, somebody is meant to be my friend, right? Somebody is meant to be someone that will understand me and accept me for how I am, and I can talk to, invent to, and be my crazy self around. So I started hosting these retreats. In Bali, the middle one is our first one. All the little babies, one of the girls is here. Mimi's here. Hi, Mimi. Thank you for coming to my retreat that had no good website. Um, <laughs> believing in me. And then we had more and more in Tulum and Utah and other places around the world. We had one here in Dubai. And for anybody interested in retreats and communities, I am teaching an entire workshop about it tomorrow at 3.30. So if you want to host in-person events, you can come to that, all right? So I figured it out. I figured out life again. I was like, ah, I am killing the game. I have all these friends. And then the pandemic hit. And I was like, all right, never mind. I have no friends. Back to zero. Okay, what do I do now? And I was like, okay, well, everybody's on Zoom. We're all stuck at home. We're all losing our minds. We're all having mental health crises. We need something to keep us busy. And by the way, these retreats were, at the time, content creation retreats, right? I teach you in six days how to make a video, scripting, editing, shooting, ideation, blah, 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 all right? So I decided, you know what? I can teach this online. Everyone wants to upskill during the pandemic, right? They're all like, I'm stuck in my house. I want to learn something. So I pivoted online, and I started teaching digital retreats online. And I know some of you are from the digital retreats. You can just say hi. Hello, digital retreat people. Hi, Kayla. Our hula hoop splits lady. We met there. <laughs> okay. So I ran 11 of these courses. You know, when the pandemic started in March, April, May, every month I ran one. And then I was tired. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Every, every week I'm, like, talking 25 hours, 30 hours. I'm saying the same thing. And I was like, I, I don't want to say this again. But I know people need this information. They want to learn how to make videos. They need to learn about, you know, how to angle your video and not just make it boring, thumbnails, titles. So I decided to pre-record what I had learned. I didn't really expect much. I was like, let me pre-record it in case anybody's like, hey, are you running your retreats? And I'm like, no, I stopped. And it went crazy. This did so well. And not only did it help me do well financially, which is the point of this talk, right? But it helped me do well with connecting with my community, and it helped people launch careers, which we'll talk about later. Fun little fact, my mom was a teacher for 40 years, so I guess I picked up something from her unintentionally along the way. Okay, so the courses did well. We had so many students getting jobs. I think Sarah's here. We had so many students getting like raises and getting hired. 
I made four courses. You can kind of see them in the background. They're faded. I did a master class, the 20-hour one. I did taboo topics, how to talk about like virginity and these sensitive issues without you know, losing your mind. I did a Let's Talk Money, a whole course about how to make money as a creator. I was trying to address the issues that I saw, right? I wasn't just like, let me make a course about something random. I was like, what are people stressed about? And what do I know that can help them, OK? And I know you guys are like, OK, that's really great, Aline. Thank you so much for this background. <laughs> Could you tell us, please, how to make money? <laughs> Thank you so much. OK, I will tell you. All right. So when I was getting started as a creator, I was dying to see the back end. I was dying to know how much money people actually made and where they made it from. I was like, please, God, let me just find one YouTube video that's titled What I Made that actually shows what I made, OK? So I'm telling you what I made in 2020. And this does not look like a lot to some of you, and it looks like a lot to some of you. I know Jordan was like, I made $400,000 in a month just from ad revenue. So I'm not Jordan, guys, OK? I'm a normal person, OK? So I made around $200,000, that's the revenue on the left, in 2020. And that was after maybe three years of being a creator, and I had 3 million followers, just for context, OK? Or maybe 2 million, 2 million, sorry, 2 million followers. Um, and that was amazing. I was like, oh my god, what's happening? I used to work for like $7 an hour for 10 years. I'm killing the game, right? So I felt really good. I felt great. And then once the course is launched, this wasn't planned, everything doubled, OK? So if you look in these numbers here, you can see the courses brought in a much higher income, whereas before, ad revenue was the highest part of my income. And I hated ad revenue being the main part of my income because it made me feel, I don't know if anyone else has felt like this or it was just me because I don't like being controlled. I felt like a performing monkey. Right? I was like, what does the audience want? What does the audience want? Jump, jump, smile. Okay? I was sick of it. I was like, no, I will not smile. I will not entertain you. Okay? So I said, let me do courses instead. That's more fun. All right? So that's how I doubled was literally just by making a pre-recorded course and building that community outside of it. Okay? So how can you guys do it? I can't tell you everything because that would be like seven years we'll be here talking, all right? But I will give you my top five tips. And the first one, instead of putting the best one last, I'm putting it first. Raise your hand if you have an email list or make a sound. Raise your hand. Raise, 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 raise. Tell me the truth. Do you have an email list? Yes. Those people, go talk to them after. They know what they're doing, okay? An email list is literally, if you leave this talk and you're like, I don't know what the heck she talked about. She said, get an email list. Build your own email list, right? When you know the, pa the pages crash, when everything crashes, you will have your email list. And I have, like I told you, millions of followers. And I have a tiny email list, like 10,000 people. 90% of my sales come from my email list. Why? It's like a funnel, right? People see you, then they follow you, then they follow you on your main page, then they follow you on your secondary pages, then they eventually sign up for your email list. And these are the people that you want to be selling to, right? Not these random people at the top, OK? Now, one thing to mention with email lists is you want to do lead magnets. Who knows what a lead magnet is? Great. Go talk to them. Look around. <laughs> All right, so a lead magnet is when you give something away for free. Like, hey, this is how to make a media kit. If you click here, you can download my media kit for free. Something valuable, right, that aligns with what your audience wants. Then they give you your email in exchange, OK? You also need to do sequences. Just write down these words if, if you're a new person and just Google it after. It's all on the internet, OK? Sequences. This right here is an email sequence. Four emails sent in a row, right? You don't send one email and expect sales. If you ever have sent an email and you're like, nobody bought my product, of course they didn't. You need to convince them, OK? That's your job, all right? So you do an email sequence, usually three to five emails. And each email talks about a different selling point, OK? Don't just repeat the same thing in five emails. All right, also, once you have an email list, or if you're selling on Instagram or wherever, you need to create scarcity. When something is available all the time, you don't want to do it. If Nas Summit was every day, you would be like, oh, I'll go tomorrow, I'll go tomorrow, and you'll never come. And you'll never learn, and you'll never improve, right? So your job as the seller is to create scarcity, because you know your product will help people. And you need them to get it, to help them, right? So limited seats is a way to create scarcity. What did Nas Summit do? Limited seats, right? Application only, only 600 people, OK? Um, limited discounts if you want when you're getting started. Early bird, we have only five early bird spots, right? Get people to sign up early. And there's so many other ways. Those are just two of the best ones, OK? I'm going to give you a specific tip that will increase your sales by 50%. And I've given this to some of my students who have built email lists. 
And she came back to me. She's like, oh, my God, it was talk to me. She was like, oh, my God, Aline, it worked. I can't believe it. She quit her job, and she's living happily ever after in Ireland, okay? So <laughs> part of your email sequence, right? You're going to build a sequence, one email, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the last ones are going to be an extend your sale email. So if you have a 72-hour sale, this class is only available for 72 hours, right? What are you going to do at the 72nd hour? Are you going to say, it's over, bye? No. You're going to send an email and you're going to be like, you know what, guys? I'm so grateful for you as my audience that I've extended the sale. We've had such great feedback that it's extended, okay? And you're going to extend the sale by 24 hours. And your sales are going to go up by a lot. This was just like a random small sale I did. This was like I literally just sent emails. I did no preparation for the sale. I sold 10K in the two days of the sale. It was a, a sale t maybe a year or two ago. And then I said, let me just extend it. And it went up. And this is not just me. You can study this online, OK? Tip number four, your course and you being a creator is only half the recipe. That's just part one. You don't make a course and you're like, wow, it's going to do so great. Yay, 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 I made an amazing course. No, you're only halfway done. I'm sorry to tell you that. <laughs> um, the next part is your marketing plan. I see so many people make a great product, and then they're like, people are going to buy it. It's so good. No, you need to sell your product. I'm so sorry to tell you this, OK? Let me tell you a quick example. I have two friends, friend A, these are real people, by the way, and friend B. Friend A has 50,000 followers. Good for them, right? Friend B has half a million followers and on a more powerful platform. Which friend do you think makes more money? A or B? A, the smaller one, OK? A lot of you are like, I need more followers. No, you need the right followers. And more importantly than the right followers is marketing skills. Don't forget to get marketing skills if you're a creator, if you're planning to make an income out of this. You cannot, you cannot just be good at content. You also need to be good at marketing, OK? This girl with the 50K makes like 10 times more or 20 times more than this one because she knows how to market. So please Google how to do marketing, blah, blah, blah. It's all online. I don't need to tell you. You can find it yourself, OK? And tip number five, our final tip, is to think of sales as service. I'm a girl. We're not raised to sell things, OK? We're raised to be nice and smile and help people for free, all right? And so I really struggled with sales. I was raised Mormon, right? We're like, be kind, help others, be generous, which is all great. And it's really good. But also, you should have money, OK? And that's fine. So I want you right now to think of your favorite product. Think. You can say it out loud. What's your favorite product? For me, Lululemon leggings, your phone. What's another favorite product? Volleyball. Volleyball. Audible. Oh, Audible. Audible. Sorry. Sorry. Audible. Audible. Love Audible. Okay. Now you're thinking of your favorite product. Thinking. Thinking. Put it in your head. If you don't have one, this doesn't work. Okay. You need to think of it. Now imagine life without this product. No. Tragedy. Devastation. OK, if someone takes away Lululemons, I don't go outside anymore. Those are my only pants I like, OK? As you can see from my Instagram feed, all right? So <laughs> that's what your product is going to be. It's going to be a product people love and people want and people need. And you are doing a disservice by keeping it to yourself, whether it's a course or something else, OK? So to end, courses create communities. Are any retreat people here, people who have taken my courses? Say hello, say hello. Yay, lots of girls, lots of people here, great. Um, they create careers. These are real examples here of some of my students. They create creators. These are more examples of students. Lily has almost a million followers. Sarah's here. Susan Tofila's here. Kayla's here. So many people. And one thing I want you to know is my personal favorite way to make money is not by prioritizing money, right? And it's counterintuitive, but you're going to hear that over and over today because that's really how it works, okay? So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening.